Search goes on in San Francisco for the man known as the Zodiac Killer. The elements involved today included psychiatrists, astrologists, and police guards for school buses. Harry Drinkwater reports. School children are nice targets. I shall wipe out a school bus some morning, shoot out the tires, and then pick off the kiddies as they come bounding out. That was the threat of the Zodiac Killer. Now, every day, police cars follow the buses which would be likely targets. Officers armed with shotguns take the threat seriously. The psychotic killer has already murdered five. December 20th, 1968. Betty Lou Jensen and David Faraday were sitting in Faraday's parked station wagon facing out over the field, where you can now see a white sign marked with the zodiac symbol. They were high school students. They were on their first date. Shots were fired to force them out of the vehicle. The Zodiac shot Faraday as he emerged from the car and then Jensen as she tried to flee. She died at the scene. Faraday was pronounced dead on arrival at the nearby Vallejo Hospital. Darlene Farron and Michael Magot were sitting in Darlene's brown Chevy Corvair at Blue Rock Springs Park when the Zodiac pulled into the lot behind them, shined a bright light through the rear windshield, and fired his gun. Michael was shot three times and survived. Darlene was shot nine times and later died at the hospital. The Zodiac called 911 from a payphone two miles east from the crime scene. He directed dispatch to Blue Rock Springs Park and mentioned he, quote, also killed those kids last year. Presumably, Betty Lou Jensen and David Faraday. September 27, 1969. Brian Hartnell and Cecilia Shepherd were lying on this beach at Lake Berryessa. Brian was lying on his back, facing out toward the water between the two small islands you can see now. Cecilia was lying on her stomach, her face on Brian's chest, her gaze on the hills behind Brian's head. She kept mentioning a man that seemed to be alone some distance away, but Brian wasn't phased. As you can see now, there is a larger hill, further back that is separated from this sliver of land by a small inlet of water. This is where Brian assumed the mysterious man was. But Cecilia grew more agitated. The man she saw was not, in fact, on the hill beyond the water, but rather on the same patch of land, standing behind one of the trees that used to be here. The man stepped out from behind the tree, wearing a black hood, with the zodiac symbol stitched on the chest. And that was when Cecilia saw his gun. Once Brian and Cecilia were tied up on their stomachs, the Zodiac stabbed them in the back, Brian six times and Cecilia ten. He then left the beach to write a message on Brian's car door, the dates of the Vallejo murders, the Zodiac symbol, and the date he attacked Brian and Cecilia with the words, by knife. On the evening of October 11th, 1969, Paul Stein drove his taxi cab westbound on Washington Street and pulled over just before the Cherry Street intersection. Stein's passenger shot him once in the head, behind his right ear, from the back seat. The Zodiac then stepped outside the vehicle to tear off a piece of his victim's shirt and left the scene on foot. Paul Stein was the Zodiac's last confirmed victim. The primary suspect in the Zodiac case Arthur Lee Allen was never arrested. He died of a heart attack shortly after being identified by the first living victim, Michael Magot. Many of the factors that allowed the Zodiac to evade arrest are likely not applicable with today's investigative tactics and technologies. And yet, the percentage of unsolved murders has been slowly increasing since the 60s. The Zodiac's methods for staying ahead of the police may be outdated but getting away with murder is not.